All right, so the initial setup of the app, I installed Webpacker by itself, and then also some packages we'll be using as we get into doing some more Vue.js work. Uh, one thing I wanna actually double check I installed is the Vue instance for Webpacker. So there's different libraries you can access for like React or uh, what's the other ones like uh, I can't think like Ember or something like that. Now there's a ton there to, to use, but I'm going to just run this installer one more time and install Webpacker, install, and then you'll do view at the end. So let me bump this up if you can't see it. And I'll run that just to make sure we have what we need and should install uh, stuff if it's not there but essentially adds a JavaScript directory to our app, which is gonna be responsible for everything view related. So here at the end of that configuration, we do need to append our content security policy with this snippet. It's kind of just a gotcha of letting view run on a non secure instance. So uh, it's kind of just the thing that's for rails two or five two, as it says here. So with that, I'll go modify that file and config. Initializers, content security policy. Definitely need to uncomment this line and this line. And within there, you can paste this stuff. And with that, you should probably restart your server once. If it's not already, I'll do it. Cool. All right, so with that, we can double check the apps running. And it is. All right, so with that, let's go and check out this JavaScript directory. We got JavaScript, an app.view file, and some packs. And the packs are the files we're actually gonna work in. I'm actually going to delete everything else right now. Delete. And I think I renamed the application to workouts because we're just going to work it. Or we're just going to use it on the workout instance. So yeah, I did that. So I will rename that file. And it's got some, some basic boilerplate stuff in here. It tells you, you, sh you need to actually append this to your layout file. So I'm going to actually do that. Copy this bit, go to our view and layouts and application right below everything else. I'll paste that in. Make sure it's called workouts though. And we can refresh. It's probably a good idea to maybe use Chrome. There's, I know there's a Vue.js extension, so I'll open Chrome and let's see if Vue kicks off. Oh, we need Webpack dev server to run too. So. That's a gotcha. So inside a new terminal instance, let's run webpack dev server. And that's gonna be possible because we installed those earlier uh, packages. So you actually wanna preface this with dot bin and then webpack dev server. Hopefully this boots up. Looks like we got an error. All right, so we can get Webpack to work manually. For some reason, I cannot get Webpack dev server to run. It might be because of a Babel issue, like a dependency is unmet. Um, I don't know that I want to deal with it. So I'm going to at least get to where we can get our view in order and start from there. So I'm going to start on the views now. So let me log into my account on WebCrunch. All right, so we can actually go to workouts if we want to see. Exercises. Oh, I typed work there. It should be workout. Let's fix that. Controllers, workouts. Out. Okay, cool. All right, so let's start at least getting this view going and working in order. So I want to, I'll probably use my other project a lot for the HTML side of this. I think it's pretty trivial, um, but I, I will show you what it's at least 
give you a rundown of what's going on. So on the form on the new path, I'll copy this over. Same for edit. These are pretty, like it's basically some Bulma styles and then we're rendering the same form partial. So edit's gonna have a very similar look and feel. And in our form is where the magic's gonna happen. By default right now, it's gonna just be plain Jane, um, but we wanna make definite effort to improve that. So let me find my form. Right now, this renders statically as an actual HTML form, which is great. Um, but I want to deal with view side of it. So I actually want to get rid of this and then create some database uh, properties on this. So we'll actually create a content tag of div. Rails can create those dynamically. And then we'll give it an ID of workout form and pass in data attributes. So these are going to be what actually renders and how we get the data back. Uh, to submit, say, through Vue. Um, we did install a Vue resource uh, library, and that's gonna be what helps us post, edit, and update these actual fields. So bear with me here. This is basically a lot of what I've done on another build, but I think it's useful to redo it a few times so you can understand what is actually happening. So Rails can convert data to JSON, which is awesome. So that little string declaration there to JSON does the trick for us, but we don't want to actually display certain fields. So we can say accept uh, ID, create it at, and update it at. Just not really necessary. And then we'll comma separate that. The exercises, this is plural, remember that, exercises, attributes. Uh, that actually needs to be plural here, excuse me. Yeah, it is, okay, good. So within that, we can grab our workout exercises, and then we'll do the same thing to JSON, except, uh, workout ID we don't really need and the same for created at like if you don't do this everything will come back so it's just one of, one of those things if you don't want to output that much data to your public facing user probably a good thing to do uh, then we'll, we can append a comment there just for grins and then it's gonna be a do block so everything's gonna happen inside this div just kind of how view mounts it mounts to a particular element so inside that we can do some bulma classes uh, then we'll do a v model which basically allows us to hook into this parameter in our view js and get that data back from the database if say we edit the workout. Uh, we need one for title too, so I'll, I'll copy this and put it first. And let's say title here. Okay, below that we will have a rendering of our nest, our yeah nested attributes. So I'll just do like a subheading here for class. Title is for, I'm using both the combination of Bulma plus some functional styles I imported for this project. That's It's in my kickoff starter template. You can use whatever you prefer here. I just, it's kind of just a, a quick way for me to move things around without actually coding custom styles just for educational purposes. All right, so we're gonna create a div and then do a for loop using view Within quotes, we'll pass in the exercise and an index. We need an index to do a for loop in workout.resource, or excuse me, exercise. It needs to be plural, attributes. 
And within that div, we can do an if v if we'll say exercise dot destroy is equal to one. Single quote that one out, and then we could do grab that exercise name and just say it will be removed. And on that button, we can add V on click, undo remove, just kind of a way to not actually delete it. And then we'll add a class button is light. And let's just say undo top of that we've got our else so the else and just within that we'll do this whole other block of form elements that will actually be our exercise so we'll say pa for bg All right, so I've added add exercise, the remove exercise one. Say, I don't want this yet, even though you've added it. Add exercise and then save workout below. So I sped up that bit. So that should essentially render, uh, but won't look exactly the way we want it yet because view for some reason isn't loading for me. So I need to figure that out. This shouldn't display at all, uh, but everything else should be working. So cool. That's taking shape, our edit would look very similar to this, basically the same thing. So with that done, we can go and work on what other bit? Our index possibly just to show when all, all of our workouts are good and go, good to go. We can just grab this and paste that in. When what's happening here is it's looking for a workout partial and then we're passing in a local variable through this instance of the each loop. So we actually need to create a workout partial uh, HTML the ERB inside that will be each workouts data. So I'll copy this over. And I've added a few helpers to make this work. But to make it more sense here, this variable is getting passed through to this partial so we can use it as is here. So you have access to that variable it links to the workout itself. We get the title back, we can get the date and the, all the other things. Um, let me add these helpers real quick to give you an idea of what's actually taking place here. All right, so we have a basic, I'm gonna put all these in the application helper. You can put them wherever you prefer if you wanna scope them to a specific model. Uh, but we'll do work out author and pass in the workout itself. And then we'll say first is the user signed in and current user dot ID equals two equal signs workout dot user ID. So basically did they create this workout? If so, they can edit or delete it. And then just a general verbose date helper. Just displays dates the way you'd prefer. You just pass in the date. So we'll just say date dot that. <laughs> and then in quotes, I'll do capital B, lowercase d, and then y. Next, we have the has subdomain. This is just useful for seeing if a user actually has a subdomain at all. We'll use this in our application layout. 
primarily. So the user needs to be signed in and then their current, oops, and current user subdomain. So we'll just check that it even exists with that helper. And then uh, the next one's just to verify subdomain presence. And that basically just looks into the request itself. From a global perspective, you can call subdomains on that and it'll spit out which subdomains are there. And then we just want to make sure there is one. So we'll just say present, just saying, is that is that actually there? Okay, cool. Okay, so that should work now in this layout. So if we go back to workout, or workouts, excuse me, nothing I'll show you because we didn't create anything, but that's essentially going to be what renders there. Uh, let me see what else I got. The show page will be pretty self-explanatory. I think I just did a basic table view uh, with the layout. Um, one thing I did do is scope a content for tag to a page yield. And what that entails is essentially creating uh, this template here, which is by default, Rails knows to look into an application directory in the views for uh, basic uh, partials that are app wide. So I'm going to create a directory called application. Again, this is a big convention. So inside that you can have global partials of any size or variety. And then I'll just call this one page template with an underscore to start. And how this works is uh, Rails just knows where may at show um, to look in that directory at, like as a result of not finding it anywhere else basically. So we don't have to pass any constraints or anything within this. It just knows to look in that directory. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but in this one, we'll actually have a basically just a layout for the show page. So I don't have to recreate this HTML each time. We could technically have done this on the new and um, edit views too, but I just did not do that. So maybe a great way to refactor your code. So what's happening is we're doing a content for block and this is going to yield out whatever you put in between that block based on the yield here. So that's how a content for block works. You can do that and establish what goes in that content within your views. So it's kind of nice and modular. Um, one gotcha though, is if you could declare this after this, it won't render. So make sure the template renders last and your content fours are at the top. Okay, so I think that's good for our workouts views. Um, we still need to hook up view to get it to work. I had an error there. I think I'm gonna troubleshoot that off camera and come back ready to, ready to roll there. So our form will need a lot more work in terms of getting this wired up with the JavaScript, but that will come into play very soon as we get into the workouts.js file. And then we'll basically finish out the app in terms of look and feel. So we still need to modify our layouts file and our home look and feel. Right now it's just got our default stuff. So look to that in the next few videos. I will see you then.